If you're building custom agents today with Copilot Studio, you know one of the most frustrating things is that your SharePoint list data can't be used as knowledge. Right? Every time I show it to someone, that's like their first thing they ask about and then their first womp womp. So yesterday when I was teaching class, they asked about it. I was like, well, but you can't use knowledge, but you can do it this other way. And then their heads went <laughs> So today I'm going to show you that other way to get that data in. We're going to do it two ways. First, we're going to do a very simple example. So the kind of wow moment can happen for you. So you understand it. And then I'll show you my more advanced example. We're even going to pull in related SharePoint lists. So, you know, parent child type of data and have all that come back in so we can use that inside of our custom agent. Sound like fun? Now let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, let's just start with the end because that's what you really want to see, like what would happen. So down here, what we're going to end with is I'm going to do something like this. Get expenses for April 13th, 2022. Yeah, my date is old, but who cares, right? And please, we're always polite. We're going to hit enter and it's going to process here for just a couple seconds. And as soon as it's done, it's going to say, ta-da! So expense report, right? That is coming out of a parent list and then the expense items that is coming out of my child list. They have a relationship and all of that is being done by the agent. So I'm just going to simply ask for get expenses for a random date and we get that outcome. Now, the real question is, how do we do it? So let's switch over, build an agent ourselves and learn how to do this. Okay, so to get ready, like I built a blank agent. This agent has nothing configured, no knowledge, topics, actions, nothing. I just built a blank agent. And this is another reminder to you guys, like when I'm learning new stuff and figuring out things like this, I don't want to do it in a context of a large moving agent with lots of things to like have to navigate around. I build blank agents and go learn, and then I insert it into the agent I want. Here's my most simple agent. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to turn on orchestration, right? This is what lets the large language model think for itself. Okay, so now the orchestration there, that way it can call the actions on its own. Now, down here under knowledge, we are going to go to add knowledge. And you go, if you go here, there's public websites. We don't want that. There's SharePoint, but this SharePoint is what? It is only document libraries, folders, and individual files. You cannot tell this to look at a SharePoint list data. This is when everyone gets angry, okay? So we can't use this, so we do back. And then we have Dataverse over here, uh, right? So Dataverse tables can be pulled in via knowledge, or we go to advanced, and then there's always new stuff popping over here. But none of that says SharePoint list data. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're actually not gonna use add knowledge. So we're gonna turn this off, now, unrelated to turning that off, I'm also going to disable this, right? Allow AI to use its own general knowledge. Almost every agent that I've built, I have turned this off because this is saying, hey, you know, if you know the answer to this question from your general big brain, large language model information, use it. Anytime I'm building these agents, I always want to just be using the knowledge that I'm giving it. So I am disabling this. Like, I think every agent that I've built, I've disabled this. Okay? But that has nothing to do with the solution. So the key to this solution is it's going to be using your Power Automate skills. But we're not going to build a flow. No, no, calm down, calm down, not build a flow. What we're going to do is we're going to go here to Actions. So when we go to Add Action, did you know that all of these actions that come back, these are the 1,500 plus Power Platform connectors, right? So all the same things you use in your Power Apps, your Power Automate flows, right? All of those connectors are here. And they're all they're the same, right? So if we're going to go over here and say search for SharePoint, because that's what we want, we have SharePoint get items. If you've ever used it in a flow before, you know this gets the list of items from your SharePoint list. And we can shape it, right? So we're going to use this as a way to pull in the information we want. Now, a lot of you are going, well, duh, of course we knew that. Did you, did you really ever build it this way? I bet you haven't, right? But it's more complicated than what, you know, just adding the action. Well, not really complicated, but anyway, we're gonna get into it, right? So keep watching, right? So we'll say next. So now it's like, all right, what do you wanna call me? And so we're gonna do something like get parent items, right? So this is the name that that orchestration that we turned on a minute ago is going to query this thing by. And the description, this is where you wanna be really good, right? I can't harp on this enough when you guys start building custom agents. Descriptions always, always matter. So if you see a description field, go there and be verbose. So we're going to say something like, get the expense report from a SharePoint list based on the user's request. And one of the things here, like I often debate with myself, right? Like this name, this description, I really wanted to make it like get expense reports, right? But we're going to see that that's what the user wants to type in. And I want, when they ask that, I want to do more than just this. So I'm trying to use a more generic name here. Like you, hopefully you'll kind of see how the story comes together. 
you know, like, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way here, but I think this is going to end better for us. Okay. So we're going to say that user authentication. So we want to use the user's authentication. Great. We'll say add an action. Now you might have noticed inputs and outputs right here with the SharePoint actions. You don't want to mess with those on that interface. Like you can, but like really what you want to do is just create this thing and then we're going to go do the inputs manually. Okay. So now you're dropped in here. Now notice this name SharePoint get items. That is not the name we use. That's the name of the action. So click on it. The very first thing you can do to make your life easier, because you're going to have multiple of these, just go over here and change this action name. And I'll usually put in something like parent or whatever, like the list name, something there. So then that screen over there, we have an easier time of finding this thing, right? This get parent items is what the orchestration cares about, but that's what I care about. And I care about me as much as I care about it. Anyway, so inputs. Okay, first thing I do is choose what SharePoint site. So we're going to go here and we're going to choose our Power Apps videos right here. And no, we're not using my SharePoint employees list. We always use that list, right? We use a different one. So we're going to go here. We're going to say set as value and confirm. Now, sometimes when you click in here, you'll get the drop down of your list. If you don't, let's jump over to my SharePoint list. And so we know that I want this list right here. It's called Expense Master. So whatever the name is here, if it had a space, you'd type the space. But whatever is there, we're going to put. So we're going to go here and we're going to say Expense Master like that. Okay. So if we ran this action now, it would get back all of the expenses. I don't want all the expenses, right? There's hundreds of them because that list has been used for a lot of demos. So we want to limit the data that comes back. So now that it's done, we're going to say add. And it's like, all right, you can add filter queries, ordering, top, limit entries to folder and limit by view. So the first thing I want to do is filter query. And so we're going to go down here. And now when you're building this, right, we're going to see, I'm going to build this one way and then we're going to come back and revise a couple of times, right? That's the key to success here. Because when you do this on your own, it's going to be hard. I, I know, right? So you have to go slow. So we're going to go slow together. So here I'm going to first do this to set as value. I'm going to just hard code my OData query. And so we're going to go down here and I'm going to do, go back and look over here. And so what we're looking for is the date column. Now, what's super important in an OData query is what is the column's actual name? So to make sure you, that you haven't renamed that somewhere along the way, you're going to go up here to here and say list settings. And then you're going to click on the date column. See up here at the top, field equals date. Whatever is right here, no matter how it's spelled, how it's capitalized, weird, whatever characters are up there, whatever is right there, that's what you need in an OData query. So we'll go back over here and we're going to say, all right, I want date. And then we're going to say equals. No, we're not. We're going to say greater than or equal. So GE, right? And if you don't aren't familiar with OData queries, I tried to drop a hint. This was coming a couple weeks ago. Go watch the OData video up there. Anyway, so greater than or equal to, and then it comes back in this weird format. And so I think we're going to do the one for, let's go look at our list again. Back over here, expense master. So we'll grab the one for uh, Friday fun day, right? 4-8-2022. Okay. So the way that you write one of these, you're going to say greater than or equal to single quote. And then what's the year? It was 2022. What's the month? Two number, two digits. So 04. And what's the day? Two digit 08. And, oh, sorry. Then you're going to do a T for time. And so what we want to do is we want to do midnight, right? So we're going to do zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, and then another single quote, right? So that will get all the records that are greater than four, eight at midnight. So right, you have to account for time in these date queries, because even though you didn't realize that SharePoint is storing that with a time as well. So you need to kind of think through that. Okay. Then we're going to say, and date less than, right? LT. And what I want to do for this one, because I'm super lazy, I'm going to copy this. That is so much to type. Copy paste that in. And then we're just going to change this to be less than four, nine at midnight, right? You could type four, eight at 11 50 or 23 59. Like, it's too hard, right? Like just make it the next day minus one, right? Or, okay. So this will return that data in theory. So let's hit save. Okay. So now it's saved. So now what I can probably do is just grab this name. So get parent items. I'm gonna go over here to the right into my little test box. And I'm just going to type in get parent items and see what happens. All right. And as soon as I do that, it's like, wait, so you can see over here on the left in the activity map, it's like, this is what I'm going to do, which is what we wanted. Awesome. But we first have to connect. We got to authenticate. So we'll say connect real quick. And so then we're just going to click on manage connections. This is the same that you do in Power Apps or Power Automate, right? We have to give it permission to use your credentials. 
So that's all we're doing here. All right, that's good. We'll say submit. And then as soon as this says that it's happy, there it goes. Now we'll just jump back over to the other tab. We could close that tab if we wanted to. We'll say retry. And so now that it has my token, it's going to authenticate. And hopefully, fingers crossed, look at that. There is our Friday fun day. Okay. So in its most simple form, this is the key thing I need you guys to learn, right? Is actions like get items returns a table of data. We have that table of data. We can then start to use that in different ways. So like one of the ones I built earlier today, let me we'll switch over to that one again. I did one for the get the list of employees. And so like here, hey, is this like breaking your brain? Like, wow, this is really cool. This is the type of stuff I want to learn. Awesome. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button, right? I got a lot of this stuff coming down the pipe very quickly. So best thing you can do to make sure that you're up to date, you're not banging your head going, ah, SharePoint knowledge is impossible. Instead, learning this stuff as fast as I'm learning it is to stay subscribed. All right, back to the video. We're going to, and we're going to talk about how to do this in just a second, but I made a dynamic query. So we could just go right here. We'll clear this out. And I could say, get the list of employees from the executive department. And there you go. Look, it's making its own OData query and it's going to pull in all of those, right? So that's the correct four people. And so then we can start to do things. So maybe instead of that, we could have asked it, um, let's see, we'll just start over again. How about get the list of employees from the executive department and calculate their average hourly pay. So now it's going to fetch those four records and then reason over the data, like just like you would expect. So we have this ability to, right? It's not knowledge in the way that, you know, Microsoft knowledge works with those other pieces, but it, it is, it's just a different way of pulling that information in. So, right, there you go. Average employees makes 57.87. I don't think that's correct because I don't think Nicole makes $12 an hour, but you get the idea. Like we have the ability to start to query that. So I've asked it things like, you know, which executive has green eye or like favorite color is green, you know, all types of different queries around the data. So that's what kind of led me to the expense report one that we're over here building. So now we built this one to begin with, with a hard coded uh, filter, because we want to make sure that it works, right? But now we want to go another step. Now we're, we're going to leave it all hard coded until we get it working and then kind of backpedal our way in. But one of the fields that came back, even though it doesn't show you, is the ID, right? That primary key. If we go back and look, right? So that's 152. And so if we go look over here at expense details, at 152, look, there are three items that go with that. Teas, tacos, and wine. Oh, I like, I like the wine part anyway. So how do we pull that in? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. We're going to add another action, right? So add an action. Our same SharePoint get items again. So SharePoint get items. I sometimes click on get list accidentally. Don't be tempted. It's get items. All right, we'll click next here. And so this one's going to be get child items, right? Once again, kind of going with that generic name, kind of want to confuse it as we kind of go. And then we'll just say, get the items related to the parent expense report. Like these names would matter more if I was truly going to let the agent like go and figure out all this on its own, which you might, but to get started, like the more constrained you are, the better, right? We're going to have more luck, right? So we're going to say add action, right? We want the one 18 seconds ago, but remember like it's, I mean, this one parent, so we're going to make this one child just to, make it easier, but that 18 seconds is usually how I figure out like which one of these did I reference in what time if I before I rename them. Okay, so there's child. On the input side, um, set as value, or Power Apps videos, list name, set as value, confirm, and I forget already what I named it, expense details. So we'll just go down here, expense details. And then now we're gonna go up here and add again. And so this time we're gonna do another filter query. We're gonna make it a little more interesting, right? So there's a the default text. Then we're gonna add something like use the format. And so then here's the format we want, right? Like this thing's kind of a pain to show. Master ID, that's the name of the column, right? Notice the weird capitalization, because that's how I made it when I originally created it. EQ999, so it's a number column. But then we'll say replace 999 with the ID from the get expense report action, except instead we call that get items action, right? So we'll just make sure that's matching up. So that looks good. So now we're going to try here is we're going to say save. So this one is completely dependent on the other one running. So I'm actually going to go back over here now to my overview and then go to my instructions. And I'm going to say something like, I'll get rid of that. And we'll just say, when the user asks to get expenses, run the action, get parent items, and then run the action, get child items to return the related expense items. 
Okay. So now notice here, I put what the user is going to say in double quotes and I highlight it or did control B right for bold around these. Uh, these are the action names. There's no proof that that works better or worse, but it makes it a lot easier for me to read. So <laughs> that's why I keep doing it. Okay. So we'll make sure that's saved. It's already saved. So now let's go over here and oh, I guess we'll cancel. We'll uh, do this. And so then we'll try. Get expenses. We'll hit enter. Now over in the activity map, we should see first our get parent items trigger, right? With our date query and then the get child items. Look, EQ equals 152. And look, there's tea, taco, wine. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I deserve wine for getting that to work, right? But so we're showing how to pull in related data. Okay, so now you're saying, well, okay, it's all hard coded though. Well, it's not all hard coded. The get child items is dynamic, but now we want to make get parent items a little bit better, right? Because we don't want to just always get that one. So let's go back to our actions. Let's go back to our parent. Let's go to inputs. Okay, so we know that the hard coded this works, but we don't want it hard coded. So we're going to have to add some logic there. So let's go ahead and let's copy that just so I don't lose it. All right, so copy. And let's just go ahead and say dynamically fill with the best option. Say confirm. And so then now down here, we're going to do something like an OData filter query to restrict the entries returned. Use the format. And then there's that pattern that we know that works, right? So then we're going to go down here and say, but replace the date with the date provided by the user. If in the above example, the user would have provided 4 8 2022. If they gave you 12 9 2025, the OData query would have been. And then I showed an example there. So I just gave it two examples of what I want and I'm counting on it to figure it out. Now, is that the best way to do that? I'm not sure. Does that work? Well, we're going to test in a second, but yes, it does. But I keep trying different things here. Like I've written that, like this is the first time, I think the today was the first time I did that one where I gave it two examples. Uh, sometimes I just give it one. Other times, like I might use my power FX skills to like just dynamically write the formula. Like I keep doing it different ways. And so far they've all worked. So I don't want to say one is better than the other. But let's just make sure this one works. So we're going to say save. And so then now what we'll do, right, we'll refresh our little test over here and we'll say get expense report for 4-12-2022, right? So we'll hit that. I forget what that expense report is, but it should be slightly different. But what I'm looking for, look, it put the 4-12 in there. And if we kind of went back up here real quick, we scrolled over and it got the 4-13. So it got the right one. Yep. So it was something called TVA demo. That's what I did. And then those were the things, looks like they had taco, tea, and caviar. I do not like caviar. Um, but you can see, like, I, the world is my oyster now, right? Like, now that you kind of start to wrap your head around getting these things, right, it's really about how good are you with OData, right? Because you're going to have to shape those queries. Now, not always. Like, sometimes you can be, in, it's kind of interesting. Like, it, it figures out quite a bit of things on its own. Um, sometimes, you know, but... For the most part, I'm trying to be very prescriptive, right? The more prescriptive I am, the more consistent my results are, the better the outcomes are for my users. So I try to be pretty prescriptive, but we can pull this in. We can start to figure over it, reason over it. Like you have different ideas in your heads of like the ways you want to use this, but this is what I've been doing in several of the agents I've built. Um, the same thing holds true like with other data sources. So I'm showing you SharePoint. I know that's the, the hot button issue, but... I've been doing the same type of technique with other data sources like Dataverse, SQL, Excel tables, like anything you can get a list of information back. The agent understands information. So, and there's more tricks to be had here, but I thought this was enough for today. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Hopefully you're getting ideas, questions, comments, leave them below. There's a lot of this stuff that I've got rattling around in my head I want to share, but I love to hear your questions. Like, like I said, this video came from one of my student questions yesterday. Speaking of my students, why aren't you one of my students? Go over to training.powerapps911.com. Sign up for one of my training classes. We have free classes. We have paid classes. We have on-demand classes. We have live classes. We have a six-month university program. We got lots. So come join us. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.